What's up everybody, Tony here with iTech Check and today we're going to be taking a look at the Asus USB 4.0 NVMe M.2 SSD enclosure. Now you can pick this up off Amazon right now. I will be putting a link in the description in case you guys want to pick it up yourself. And if you guys like me and you want to support my channel, please use those links because it helps me keep purchasing products to do with you guys. So this particular enclosure is supposed to be able to theoretically do 40 gigabytes a second. It has a USB type C interface with a Thunderbolt 3 cable. So you can use this with Windows and a Mac. And we're going to be testing this out on my iMac today with some very popular uh, NVMe SSDs. Here I have the uh, Samsung 970 Evo Plus, the 2 terabyte, and I also have the Western Digital Black uh, SN 750 1 terabyte. So we're going to see uh, what kind of speeds we can get uh, from these two NVMEs because I purchased the tree built uh, NVMe enclosure and I used it with the uh, Evo Plus. And I wasn't getting the speeds that I was supposed to be getting. Now, when I put in the Western Digital, I got excellent speed. So I kind of want to see if it's the enclosure or if it's something with the Evo Plus uh, not being compatible with the iMac. We're going to go ahead and find out because we're going to test both of these. Okay, so here we have the enclosure. It is all aluminum, which is nice. It's got USB 4.0 there with a little LED. Feels pretty solid. It has some uh, pretty good weight to it. Here is that Thunderbolt 3 uh, cable that I said it came with before. Here we get a little screwdriver with a couple uh, screws to mount your uh, NVMe in there. And here we have the thinnest thermal pad I've ever seen. This is really almost nothing there. Here's your manuals and your warranty with a free gift. So this is super simple to open. Uh, you don't need uh, any tools to open this up. You just pretty much uh, take your thumb where it says open here and just push out and it'll open up the case here. All it is is held in by a couple of these ball bearings and it has a little lip that fits into the bottom here so it won't just fall out. Super simple to open up and as you can see we can go ahead and fit our SSD uh, right in here. So we're going to go ahead and try the 970 EVO Plus first. So you pretty much just take this, fit it in here, Push that in. We'll go ahead and take one of our screws and put in the screw here. Don't tighten it up real tight, just, uh, just a little bit is good enough just to hold it in place. There you go. As you can see, the top of the SSD comes right almost to the top there. I went ahead and bought some thermal pads myself because I didn't like how thin that was. These were uh, definitely a little thicker than the other one. So we'll try, we'll go ahead and try that. So that covers it pretty good. And it looks like it comes right up to the, to the edge of the metal there. So that'll take away some of the heat pretty good. Okay, so now that the pad's in there, all you need to do is take your top here. I'll go ahead and put the little lip into the edge here and then just kind of uh, press down and it'll clip in place. Perfect. All right, so let's take it over to the computer and see how well it performs. Okay, so I have the NVMe enclosure directly plugged into its own port directly onto the iMac. It's not going through any hubs or anything because I want to get the fastest speed possible. And as you can see, there is a little green light there just to show you that it is on. So if we look at our iMac here, we can see that it is recognizing the NVMe. I have the black magic design disk speed test up and we're gonna see uh, what kind of speeds we get from this enclosure. So I'll go ahead and select our target, which is going to be our NVMe. Click open and we'll go ahead and do our test here. And that's kind of what I was afraid of. This is pretty much exactly what I was getting from the other enclosure. As you can see, the write speeds are only about 850 megabytes when it should be uh, pretty much equal to the reads here. Now the reads are working perfectly fine. We're getting like 2,600 
uh, megabytes a second, which is uh, pretty much what this NVMe can do, but the writes are, are pretty low. So, uh, like I said, I think it might be something with you know, the iMac and the Samsung SSD that doesn't allow it to write at its full potential. And as you can see, my iMac is running uh, Mojave. It's not the latest, um, but it is, you know, fairly, fairly recent. It's not the oldest and it's not the newest, but still that write speed is, is not where we need to be. So, Let's go ahead and put in the Western Digital and we'll see what kind of speeds we get out of that. Okay, so here as you can see, I just put in my Western Digital and it comes up as the NVMe uh, 1T. So now we're going to go ahead and do a Blackmagic uh, disk speed test and we'll see what kind of speeds we get from this NVMe. Now keep in mind, both of these NVMe's uh, pretty much have the same speed. Samsung is a little quicker, but it's negligible. So we should pretty much get the same exact uh, speed test from both NVMe's. All right, so let's go ahead and start up that speed test. Okay, so we're getting 2100 write and about 2450 uh, read, which is pretty much what we should be getting. Now these SSDs can do a, a little better, but that's pretty much theoretical. Um, I think with the Western Digital, it can do up to like 3500 uh, read, but I mean, it's getting 2500. So, I mean, it's, it's pretty close. It's not full potential, but it's definitely doing better than the Samsung SSD did. Now, like I said before, I don't know. I don't think it's the enclosure. I think it has to do something with the uh, nine, the Samsung 970 Evo Pluses. They just don't give their full write potential for some reason, whatever that may be. And my NVMe is uh, up to date as far as the firmware goes because I put it into my PC and made sure that the firmware was up to date. So this enclosure is doing what it's supposed to be doing. It can do up to 40 gigabytes. And if you want that, you're gonna have to get a faster uh, NVMe. So I am exporting a 4K video. That's about 22 minutes long directly to the drive here. And we're gonna see uh, how much it heats up just by running it. So far it's barely warm. Okay, so we're about 25% rendered. Let's go ahead and check the heat again. Again, same thing, barely warm. So it seems to be doing a good job at heat dissipation and it doesn't have any uh, internal fans that make any noise, so it's totally silent. Okay, so we're halfway done with the render. We'll go ahead and check the drive again. It's definitely warmer than it was before, but it's just barely warm. Again, there's, it's not hot at all. Okay, so here we are at 75%. Go ahead and, yep, it's just as warm as it was at 50% barely warm at all. All right, and here we are almost completed. And it is a, just about as warm as it was at 75%. It's just warm. It's nowhere near hot. So I definitely think that that thermal pad uh, is doing its job along with the aluminum enclosure. So let's do some more disk speed tests and see if we can get it to, to heat up a little more. It's definitely a little warmer than it was before, but it's still uh, not hot. Even though we're doing this uh, read-write test over and over again. So it's definitely warming up. It is warmer than it was before when we were doing 
uh, the render from uh, Final Cut Pro, but again, it's not hot, it is just warm. So it's been about 20 minutes now and the enclosure is definitely hotter uh, than it was when we first started. It's not scalding, it's definitely uh, warm. You can hold it, you're not gonna get burned. And I definitely think it's going to be fine for doing day-to-day -day things that you need to be doing so you don't have to worry about your NVMe being throttled because the heat dissipation is definitely doing its job. I probably re would recommend you getting a little thicker uh, thermal pad like I did uh, to give you the best performance possible. Um, and it seems to be doing just fine uh, based off of the disk speed test that we see here. So that's pretty much it for this ASUS NVMe enclosure. If you guys have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. I'm going to be more than happy to answer anything I can for you. And don't forget, I will also be putting a link in the description for this in case you guys want to pick it up yourself. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, give me a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that little notification bell to let you guys know when I put out new videos. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you have a great day and I'll see you in the next one. Later.